Welcome to Statistics in Excel video number 60. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link and you can download the workbook. Business 210 Chapter 5. If you're in the class, go to our Chapter 5 website. Hey, we got a great example here. We're doing mean and standard deviation for a discrete probability distribution. Here we have a budgeting income statement example. Uh, for retail. Here we have some past data, or th this is a probability distribution that we've constructed from past data. Unit demand, 500, 600, 700, 800, and up to 1,100. And these are the associated probabilities for each month. And we need to figure out an average of units used, then we can use that for budgeting. We can use it to estimate our income statement. So let's go ahead and add all these up and make sure we got our probability table. Requirement two is that all the probabilities have to equal one. They all are less than, or greater than, or equal to zero, which is uh, requirement one. Now we're going to do mean and standard deviation. Let's go ahead and do mean. Now what is the formula? It's each individual x divided by each individual probability and then add them up. The perfect function for that that will not require an extra column of calculations is some product. Some product. All you got to do is put some arrays of equal dimensions in and it will multiply them and then add them. Highlight that one, comma, and then highlight the second one. Close parentheses. How cool is that? So there it is. From our probability distribution based on past data, we have an average we can use of number of items to order for our budgeting. Now, standard deviation, uh, to give us an idea what the spread in the data is, we're going to go ahead and use some product also. I have, in the last video I did it longhand, we'd have to uh, calculate each deviation and then square it and then come down here and do some product this column times the probabilities and we saw the, the the official statistics formulas last time but that's it deviation squared times each associated probability add them all up and then take the square root let's do to avoid this all of this uh, extra columns here we're going to do it all in one formula I'll do the sum product part first and then I'll put the square root around it equals sum product now, we've got to think about this carefully if we're going to do it in one formula. Remember over here we had to take a whole bunch of x's minus one mean and square it. So when we get to our first array and sum product, we've got to put in parentheses, we want the minus right here to come before the exponent. If we didn't have the parentheses, forget it. The exponent would be done first and not the minus. So we put it in parentheses. We highlight all of our x's. This is the awesome thing about some product. It knows how to deal with a range of values or an array minus. And we just click on our single value. Close parentheses. In the last video we saw how if you highlight something like this, if you're not quite getting that it's... Sp it, oh well that won't work because we want to do our um, square root first outside the green parentheses, shift six, which is caret two. There, there it goes. That, that's simulating this whole column of values. And now, if you were to highlight all of that and hit the F9 key, you can see that it, it just in one little formula, the sum product is like magic. It got every single one of those values perfectly. Now, don't leave them hard coded, control Z. That's the first array, comma, and now we need our probabilities. Oh, that is just so cool, so efficient um, and space saving. Enter. Oh, but that's not the right answer. So we click back in the cell and hit F2. Remember, we learned this last time for the first time. No matter how big or small, whatever formula you have is, you could put it inside of another formula. And we want the square root, so we'll just do square root. Open parentheses, very carefully come to the end, very carefully click there, or safer to come up here and put a close parentheses, and then enter. There it is, all in two cells. We've made our boss so happy who wanted us to do the budgeting, right? All the other people he had work for them, of course, took up lots of extra space in the spreadsheet, but you came in knowing how to use this great sum product uh, based on this um, uh, 
distribution here and probabilities and uh, saved a lot of space and made your boss happy. Now, the boss is not going to be happy unless what? You go ahead and use this 790. That's the number of units we're estimating per month on average that we're going to need. All right, so we have our little uh, set of data down here. And we're going to assume that once we buy 790, for instance, it's a perishable good, uh, we'll only be able to use them for this month. All right, here's our price, here's our cost, here's the units we're going to assume sold. So can we calculate our sales? Sure, you bet. Uh, we only sold 700 times our 125, enter, but we bought and uh, consumed, perishable or not, sold or not, 790 from our budget times our 60. Now, can we calculate our ew, gross profit? Sure, you bet. Equals whatever the sales, revenue minus our expenses. All right, and what's so nice about this is it's all based on this uh, mean, and we can also just change our assumptions. What? Uh oh, we had a bad month. We only sold uh, 500. Oh, we had a terrible month. We only sold 300. Oh, and then we're getting into negative territory. Oh, <coughs> we had a great month. We sold 1,000. <coughs> so there's how uh, we can use our discrete probability distribution and our mean to do some uh, basic budgeting. When we come back in our next video, we'll see a stock example.